Welcome to Regeneration Life Church Online. Special topic. Tonight's special topic, recognizing manipulation. If you get anything out of this message, please feel free to share it with your friends and family. Hit the like or love button as an amen. We all know the story, the true story, of Samson and Delilah from Judges 16. Samson was a Jewish strong man who had great physical strength, as long as his hair was long. He had a pretty open relationship with a Gentile woman named Delilah as she was approached by Philistine leadership. They knew about the relationship, so it's not like uh, Samson and Delilah kept it a secret. But these Philistine leadership were enemies of Israel. And they offered a fortune to her to find out how he could be made weak so that they could capture him and afflict him. Judges 16, 6, And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. Now she was using the language she was given, but it may have been that she was being playful, so he didn't pick up on it. Three times he told her different things, and she kept trying them out, and the Philistines kept coming after him. He didn't quite catch on. She asked him three times and it didn't work, so she brought out the big guns. Manipulation. 1 Samuel 16, 15 through 17 says this, And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart. And I'm sure we know the rest. He got his head shaved, essentially. Delilah's goal was money. That's what she wanted. She wanted all that fortune and silver, so she didn't care at that point for Samson or whatever was going to happen to him. She pulled the old, if you really loved me, you would do X. Samson let himself get manipulated, and we know the rest of the story. Manipulation, ladies and gentlemen, is a form of witchcraft. As first of all, you are playing God with somebody else. You are trying to get them to do something that you want them to do. And it is a, an attempt to alter reality in the mind of another person for some goal. Sometimes the goal is just to see if you can do it. According to Christensen... Manipulation is an unhealthy psychological tactic used to control how someone thinks, feels, or behaves. Some people willfully manipulate others to get their needs met, gain control, or feed their egos. We've all dealt with someone whose behavior was toxic. There are many people who have manipulative parents, manipulative relatives, a significant other, even a spouse, a manipulative boss. Some of us have dealt with that. A manipulative subordinate, like the secretary, who waves the boss's paycheck in front of his face until he says, please. It might look playful, but it's a power play. Why do people manipulate? First of all, for control. Uh, control of the other person. Maybe control of the relationship, whatever that relationship might be. To control the situation. To avoid personal accountability, or maybe to attain some goal. This study on manipulation isn't just for people to recognize this behavior in others, but also to recognize it in yourself. So that if you are born again, you realize what you're doing and you can crucify it before any more damage is done. Make no mistake, if you are behaving this way with anyone to try to get your own way, you are committing a form of witchcraft and trying to play God. It is a sin. The Jewish leadership, we find manipulated Pontius Pilate. And in their behavior, we see many symptoms or aspects of manipulation. Luke 23, 1 through 4 shows us the manipulators twist the truth. And the whole multitude of them arose and led them unto Pilate. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. First of all, he didn't do that. 
He wasn't perverting the nation. He was simply telling them the truth. Uh, secondly, he was never forbidding anybody to give tribute to Caesar. As a matter of fact, he said the opposite. He's talking, taking the coin. Whose image is on the coin? Caesar's. Render under Caesar what is Caesar? Render unto God what is God's. Who, whose image was on the coin? Caesar's. Whose image is on you? God's. That's the point. He never told them, hey, don't pay your taxes. Continuing, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. The Roman governor found no fault in Jesus. Surely he had heard the words and actions of Jesus. I'm sure it was spread all around, all around the, the Roman province. I'm sure that it had got back to him. In his one-on-one -on -one meeting with Jesus, Christ told him, My kingdom is not of this world. So Pilate saw no reason to condemn Jesus. Manipulators are good at what politicians call spin. It's when you can take a situation and you can either add some information or subtract from some information to make yourself look better and your opponent look worse. It's called spin. By the way, most politicians are manipulators. They just want your vote. And they twist the truth all the time. And don't get me wrong, I'm not painting with a wide brush. I know that there are some who go into office who have good intentions in mind. But there are probably far more that just want your vote. And so they'll tell you anything that you want to hear, like the politician who said that his, his uh, favorite verse was John 16.3. Well, John 3.16 3, says something completely different than John 16.3. John 16.3 says that they do these things because they belong neither to me or my father. So, anyway, that's a loo the, loose, uh, uh, the loose carpy translation, I guess you could call it. I'm just kidding, I don't translate the Bible. Anyway, <clears throat> just paraphrasing. Manipulators will take the truth out of context. They'll take what you say out of context. They'll say that you said things that you didn't say. They will take, uh, for example, if you say that kind of behavior is ridiculous, they'll say, oh, you said I'm ridiculous? You might say, I don't think you read that right. Oh, oh, so I can't read now. You know, right now you're acting like a horrible person. Oh, so you think I'm a horrible person, huh? Well, that's not what was said. Right now you are acting like a horrible person. Why are you acting that way? Yep, I'm the B-word. I'm the jerk. Uh-huh, sure. Okay, everything you say is getting twisted. They did the same thing uh, with Jesus here. In front of, uh, they took the words of Jesus and twisted them. You know, um, you can say, maybe I can help you out with some of your expenses. And then they'll come around and go, Wait a minute, you didn't pay my rent. You liar, you said you'd pay my rent. Meanwhile, that's not what you said at all. You said, maybe I can help with some of your expenses, and they took it completely something you didn't say. As part of their penchant for twisting reality, they'll twist your words. Another person I know had a romantic interest uh, keep contacting him and wanting to go do something. She kept coming up with excuse after excuse after excuse, and she would always stand him up. She must have stood him up five or six times. When he finally asked her why, she became angry and started yelling at him. And when he said, you know what, uh, how would you feel as a mother if someone had done this to your son? This woman went ballistic and screamed, how dare you talk bad about my son? Nobody talked bad about your son. God was actually talking bad about you. And how would you feel if somebody act like you in front of your son? Or did, the, did what you did to your kid? How would that make you feel as a mother? Guy told me he tried to talk her down. But then she said, I knew I was right to not show up on any of our dates. That's what she told him. He called her out on her manipulation, thanked her for revealing who she really was, hung up and blocked her, and never talked to her again. See, the manipulator will do anything that he or she can to manipulate your perception of reality to their own ends. Another thing manipulators do is blame shift. It's always someone else's fault. 
I'm like this because it's that guy's fault. Or I'm like this because somebody else did that. Now, granted, there are cases in which somebody's past does influence who they are. But the bottom line is it might influence you, might pull you in a certain direction. But each individual action is you making a choice. But manipulators will blame shift. Luke 23, 5. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. Now here's the thing. The Jews were stirred up in Rome long before Jesus came along. As a matter of fact, Judah lost the ability to legally enact the death penalty, a fulfillment, by the way, of Genesis 29.10. And the very reason they needed to come to the Roman government to put Jesus to death was due to their own uprisings. It's how they lost the ability to do it legally on their own. This is what manipulators do, folks. They, they, they refuse to take responsibility and they shift it onto someone else. If they do take responsibility, usually it's very minimal. If something happens, they make sure to make it all your fault. They claim innocence, no matter what the evidence is against them. It's, it's always somebody else. I never do anything wrong. Look at my halo. Yeah, right. Meanwhile, you turn around and take the halo off their head and throw it at you like a ninja star. Anyway, what about the wife who's caught having an adulterous affair? I did it because I was lonely. I did it because you don't do X. She'll come up with any reason that it's not her fault. Now, how about the husband who physically abuses his wife and kids? And he says, you made me do this. No, you made you do that. You had a choice. No matter how crazy she might get, you had the choice to walk away. By the way, husbands, little secret, don't call her crazy. You will pay. Anyway, the guy, uh, for example, who might go out drinking with his buddies after promising his wife he'll be home for their child's birthday. But my friends drug me kicking and screaming out. I didn't want to go. I wanted to be home. But they said, oh, it's just going to be a little while. Come out with us. So I just, they just wouldn't take no for an answer. It's not my fault. Mm-hmm. Okay. When I worked in pro wrestling, there was a, in one of the companies I worked for, there was a two-man promoting and booking team. One of these guys, they ran a card with a lot of stars on them, uh, a lot of, a lot of high-paid talent. Um, and he, this one guy, took credit for everything before the show. But when it was discovered that he had gone way over budget, he changed his story and he blamed the other promoter. Well, well, it was all him. He, he's the one who did it. Well, when I told him, hey, man, you, you can't have things both ways, his response to me was, you're not loyal to me. Excuse me? You don't have to sit there and lie to me and tell me two different things, contradictory things. When I call you out on it, suddenly you say I'm not loyal. That's nonsense. So this guy spent too much money and essentially scapegoated the other guy after saying everything was him making the decision. And when someone pointed out that he can't have it both ways, he avoids the issue and scapegoats now the conversation into the loyalty of the person who brought up the contradiction. That's manipulation. Uh, there's a Christian school here in Texas where I used to work. Um, they were investigated for grade tampering years ago. They were changing grades behind the scenes, is, is uh, allegedly. I, I'm, I, I can be honest, having taught there and having seen some of the things that went on, to me it's not so allegedly, but for legal purposes I will say allegedly. Despite many teachers affirming that grades of some students were changed with by ways against the law. His comment about this and his response was, The devil is attacking our school. He's trying to extinguish our light in the community. Okay, so now we got a guy, a, 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 a supposed Christian guy, scapegoating the devil for his own decisions. Now I'm sure the devil was involved in it, but not the way this guy is trying to make it sound. And, and by the way, this does um, kind of sound familiar. The serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Uh-oh. Folks, this is what manipulators do. They commit an act in bad faith, pun intended, 
and blame someone else for the consequences they themselves caused. Manipulators are also, or can be, very sarcastic. John 18, verses 29 and 30. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Notice the chutzpah here. Sarcasm is an underhanded way of referring to you as stupid or your argument as illogical. This is just simple, plain, old, passive aggression. Another pro wrestling story from back when I was in there. I was booked to be an announcer and a commentator uh, at an event called Gobstock in San Antonio. The promoter who took us up there was woefully unprepared and was running around trying to get last-minute stuff done. We actually ended up starting an hour late because of this. Well, I said, look, while you're here, I need you to write down the card for me because you want me to announce it. I don't have any information. As he's walking away, he turns around at me and he yells, Does my head look like it's on a swivel? Oh, I couldn't resist. I could not resist. Folks, if anyone ever asks you that, the correct response is, yes, it's called a neck. This guy's passive-aggressive behavior took me off guard, but I came to find out it was kind of a personality thing, because this happened many, many more times. Another one. Manipulators are guided by emotion and selfishness. Matthew 27, 16 through 18. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom, whom will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas! Or Jesus, which is called Christ. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Anyone who has ever dealt with a manipulative person knows that, that uh, often reasoning goes out the window in favor of emotion. They want things their way, and if it is in your power to grant it or not, they will do anything they can to get you to give them what they want. In this case, the emotion was envy, and Pilate knew it. The Pharisees and other Jewish leadership were losing influence and were concerned about Christ continuing to teach and openly rebuke them, as was his habit. So they were going by emotion more than fact here. Manipulators will often try to hide their true motives if it helps them get their intended goal. See, the Jewish leadership tried to pretend that it was zeal for their religion that caused them to want Christ crucified. When what it really was was a simple fact that they were losing face with the people, and Christ was causing many to see right through their hypocrisy. Now, don't misunderstand. Uh, there are people who will confront you lovingly when you do something wrong, but there are also people who will tell you everything that they think is wrong with you in a very foul demeanor, and then try to tell you that, I'm only trying to help you, after screaming at you and calling you evil. I once had a friend uh, who was pretty open with his male friends about his feelings for uh, a young female friend that he had had. Uh, another one of his male friends had asked him to go to lunch, and he got the guy to talk about his female friend that he had developed feelings for. This, the first guy that had the feelings for this young lady told his friend his plans. He was going to try to convert the friendship into a romantic relationship. But he said he was playing it careful so as not to destroy the friendship. He had planned to talk to her soon. With this information, the next day, this so-called friend asked the young lady out. When the first young man, who was playing it cool, confronted him, the guy responded, I'm doing you a favor. I'm teaching you how to be more assertive. Sorry, no. The guy hid his true intentions. He was couching them under the guise of concern and compassion. And then he betrayed his friend, since apparently he also liked this young lady. Mm -hmm. Manipulators also get others involved to get what they want. Look at Matthew 27, verse 20. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Mark 15, 11. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. 
Essentially, they enlisted as many in the crowd as they could get to get strength in numbers. Now, I know a married couple whose wife was constantly going to a lady in the church who acted like this woman, acted like she thought of herself as some kind of Bible guru, even though she could be extremely snarky with people and very judgmental herself. Uh, the wife was constantly bad-mouthing the husband no matter what the guy did. The wife was always running to this person in the church, this woman, and getting this person involved in the marriage, and always bad-mouthing her husband no matter what the husband did. She would then go home and tell the husband what the church lady had said. See, she agrees with me. When the husband confronted the situation, coming to find out the wife's bad behavior was conveniently left out of the story. Sometimes getting people involved is fictitious. What do I mean? It comes in the form of inventing some fictitious third party that agrees with them as well. Well, you know, I talked to some of my friends at lunch the other day, and they agree with me. Meanwhile, she was sitting at home eating a Hot Pocket the other day. In some cases, you really do need to get others involved if you cannot handle the situation yourself. But this is referring, this manipulation that I'm talking about is referring to bringing in others just so that you can have your way or get support in defending something that is indefensible or in some other way trying to get something to happen that you want to happen like these Pharisees and, and, and other Jewish leaders did trying to get Christ on the cross. Manipulators are not reasonable people. Matthew 27, verses 20 through 23. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. Now, here's where the not thinking correctly comes in. Barabbas was an insurrectionist and a murderer. We find that out in Mark 15:7. Barabbas was also a robber, John 18, 40. His name, bar Abba. In the Aramaic, Bar means son. Abba means father. So Barabbas means son of the father. Who is his father? Well, Mark 15, 7 and John 18, 40 show that he was an insurrectionist, a murderer, and a robber. John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. John 8, 44, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Ephesians 2, 2, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The thing is, Barabbas was more in line with who the Jews were expecting the Messiah to be. The Jews at the time had actually uh, expected two Messiahs, as they had trouble justifying the prophecies into one person. They called these Messiah ben David and Messiah ben Joseph. Now, Messiah ben Joseph was thought to be the meek and mild suffering servant, but Messiah ben David was thought to be the delivering conqueror who would destroy all of Israel's enemies. And that's the Messiah they were expecting. They didn't know it's the same guy who would make two visitations to the planet. Under Roman occupation, the Jews expected the Messiah they called Messiah ben David, who would come and deliver them from Roman oppression. But Jesus came as the suffering servant the first time. So essentially, the Jewish leadership chose to let someone who was a son of a father, free, and crucify the son of the father. They let free the son of a devil, or the son of the devil, and they crucified the son of the father. They knew what they wanted to do, and they didn't care that Jesus was innocent of their charges. In life, uh, and this, this actually happened. A woman had said she wanted to be, as a matter of fact, everything I've told you has happened, but a woman said she wanted to be friends with a man. They got together many times. They went out. She was always telling him, oh, I'm so happy that we're friends. 
It makes me feel so good that we're friends. And it's nice to have a friend like you. And she called him up one night and started screaming at him. She was angry that he never tried to date her. And he was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You said you didn't want to date. You said you were clear. You only wanted to be friends. Her response, yeah, I knew you were going to bring that up. I can't believe you're using my words against me. Excuse me for a second. Yeah. So essentially, she was clear. She told him, I don't want to date you. But later, she, I guess she changed her mind, and she wanted to date the dude. He was operating under what she told him. And when he honored what she told him, she tried to manipulate the reality as though it was his fault that they were not dating. Folks, <laughs> this is not the communication of a reasonable person. And the funny thing is, the guy actually liked her. And had she approached this situation as a reasonable person and just said, you know, I changed my mind, I'd like to date you. He was single, she was single, they liked each other. He, he would have most likely been romantic with her. He said he was glad that she came at him like that, though, because it showed her true nature. And he had no problem at that point cutting contact. Because he did not want to be in that situation where somebody could just snap at a moment's notice. Moving on. Manipulators often refuse to give direct answers to legitimate questions. Matthew 27, 23. And the governor said, why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. Luke 23, 16 says, they all cried out all at once. See, they answered a legitimate question with screaming. All they could do before was sarcastically say, if he was not an insurrectionist, we would have not delivered him unto you. That didn't work. This is just a great example of deflection, an aggressive deflection at that. Don't like the question? Just don't answer. Even better, scream at a little girl who didn't get what, who didn't get her ice cream cone today. Just scream. Just yell. Just get mad. Maybe they'll forget their question. Or like one so-called Christian school administrator did, lay it at the feet of the Lord. Blame God. The administrator, and let's just call him the owner since he owns the land, the building, and the school, and so he can never be removed no matter what he does, was a very manipulative man when I worked there. He paid the teachers very little while paying himself very highly so that his family could live high on the hog and go on lavish, expensive vacations every summer. Meanwhile, teachers could not even scrape by on the peanuts he was tossing them. When his teachers asked one time at a meeting, you know, why, do you, why don't you pay us more? His response, well, you'll receive more rewards in heaven. Okay, so he paid his teachers, teachers very little. Uh, he paid himself, or what he paid himself, he paid himself very highly, and what he paid himself was evident in his lifestyle. He didn't have to tell you how much he made. You could just look, look at what he had and what he did. And then when the teachers want to know, why, 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 why don't we make more? Why do we scrape by working for you? And some of them didn't even scrape by. He didn't give a straight answer, but he deflected, and he put it on God's doorstep. His reference was, you'll get more rewards in heaven. That's not only religious manipulation, but it's an indication that possibly his own rewards in heaven just weren't that important to him. Manipulators will get louder and louder. Luke 23, 20 through 23. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. <clears throat> Excuse me. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. Somehow, many manipulators think that volume is a good replacement for logic and reasonableness. How many spouses have gone to the other spouse about some legitimate concern? And the other spouse didn't want to discuss it or admit fault and only started screaming and bringing up things that had nothing to do with the concern. 
Honey, can we talk about the money you've been spending on golf every week? Yeah, well, remember that time you didn't wash your feet and almost killed the dog? You're not innocent. Just screaming to scream. You don't want to deal with the situation, right? Okay. Manipulators often do not think things through before speaking or acting. Matthew 27, 25, Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Oh, they had no idea what they were saying. Uh, they had just declared themselves guilty of the very death of the Messiah. But we don't accept him as Messiah. Well, you know, go out and try not to accept the law of gravity and jump off something. What you think doesn't change reality. So they, they were saying, oh, let his blood be on us and our, on our children. They, they just thought he was just some guy that was causing problems. Or at least they tried to make it seem that way. They're blind to everything here except their goal. People that manipulate will even threaten to hurt themselves, and actually hurt themselves if it means getting what they want. There was a, um, a Christian school administrator who was also the football coach of the school. He had his players turn in their uniforms for inspection, then told his high school players to stay home telling them that the game had been canceled. He then brought in college students, including his own son, who was a college junior at the time, to play a high school game. Now, making the opposing high school team a play adult college uh, ringers should have gotten this coach arrested on multiple counts of endangering a minor. Could you imagine if somebody had gotten hurt? They got tackled by this six foot four, 240 pound 22 year old playing against a 15 year old or a 16 year old? Imagine what could have happened. That's endangerment. Now this episode was so scandalous that it received an article in Sports Illustrated magazine. Crazy thing is, is that the high school team won the game against the college students. Well, the score got reported online in a six-man high school football website, and one of the parents reported saying that the three of the actual players were at his house during a game. During the game. Couldn't believe it. He actually called the website. He said, this can't be right because they didn't play. Well, it snowballed from there. See, this administrator wasn't thinking straight because how did he think he would get away with this? Did he apologize for it? No, he did not. He sent a letter that almost resembled an apology where he said that his normal team were banged up, he would not be bringing his regular players, and it would just be a pickup game for fun. He was suspended for five games but wasn't fired. Well, why wasn't he fired? He said, my school supports me. Nope, that was a lie. You see, this Christian school administrator owned the school. He might as well have said, as Sports Illustrated pointed out, I support me. By the way, this guy also taught Bible. Manipulators often keep up their behavior until you give in. Matthew 27, 26. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when, they, when he had scorched Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. So a pagan Gentile governor recognized that Jesus was innocent and he didn't want to punish him, but the Jews were relentless. The leadership was relentless. They were getting everybody involved to scream, crucify him. They wouldn't let it go. They wouldn't accept no for an answer. Pilate kept trying to reason with them, but there was no reasoning with these people. Remember, uh, Delilah kept on Samson daily until he gave in. She kept coming at him. And his soul was sore vexed and he finally gave in. <sighs> now, between Christ being um, whipped and the time he went to be crucified, Pilate tried again. So we're going to talk about what happened here. Manipulators show a lack of empathy and mercy. John 19, 1 through 6. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scorched him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. 
Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man! When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Zero empathy. Pilate had the Lord whipped. Probably, and we can't prove this, but it was probably the 39 lashes, as it was thought that 40 would kill a man. Uh, the soldiers even took additional liberties with him, pushing a crown of thorns into his brow, putting a robe on his horribly beaded, bleeding back after being whipped, and punching him. All the Jewish leadership here could see was their law, a law they themselves regular, reg, regularly perverted at their convenience. John 19, verse 7, the Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. And by the way, um, how come these Pharisees recognize what Jesus was saying, and many people who claim to follow him will still deny his deity? I'll never understand that. But at any rate, back to the what we're talking about. Jesus, who did nothing but point out their refusal to truly obey God and called them to repentance, was standing there losing blood with a robe on his shredded back. Have you ever tried to put on a piece of clothing when you have a gash, a fresh gash on you? It hurts. So here he is bleeding from that, and he has a crown of thorns shoved into his head, and all they could see was law. This kind of person that the Pharisees were being is the boss who fires anyone he doesn't like for any reason he sees fit. It's the principal who tells a physically handicapped person that he can no longer request or make deals for right to work from other teachers. Yeah, that's happened. They expect empathy out of you. They'll try to tug at your heartstrings, but they have none of their own. YouTube is replete with manipulation stories where people will say things like, I'm going to tell my son you're ruining his birthday in order to get something that they want. I had a roommate who insisted all the bills get paid in my name. Now, I didn't see a problem with it at, the, at first because we were roommates. I had no issue. Uh, as long as the bills got paid, I was fine. Well, then I moved out. And he decided to move somewhere else as well. And he wanted me to transfer the power and the water in my name to his new place. And I wasn't really his friend if I didn't do this. Because apparently he owed them money and he would have had to pay it plus a big deposit to get it turned on in his name. So he blew it, I said no, and everything was my fault. Manipulators will use personal attacks and degrading words, John 19, 12. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Now, to be called a uh, friend of Caesar in Rome was a high honor. Those who obeyed Caesar were called the friends of Caesar. For someone to say that you were not a friend of Caesar was an attack on your honor. It was a verbal equivalent to a slap in the face. Nice backhand. That's what it was. These Jews were insulting Pilate to manipulate him so that they could get what they wanted. Jesus on the cross. And here's the thing. The crazy thing is, Jesus was very clear. My kingdom is not of this world. How many times did he refer to the kingdom of heaven? How many times did he refer to the kingdom of God? It's not of this world. He wasn't trying to become an insurrectionist against Rome. Now, as far as personal attacks and degrading words, manipulators do this all the time. If you don't let me spend a, a ton of money, you aren't a good husband. If you don't take me to that expensive restaurant, you're heartless. If you don't lend me your fill-in-the-blank, you're not my friend. 
Since you're telling me things that I don't want to hear, you are the worst person I ever met. Well, I'm sorry, but the Bible says faithful are the words of a friend. But they'll tell you, you're the worst friend I ever had. Any kind of insult to pull on your emotions to get you to do what they want. Mm. Manipulators will use false accusations and threats. John 19, 12. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Oy. We just said it. Jesus had already said his kingdom is not of this world. Kingdom of heaven. And king, kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of God. It's not of this world. He had been very open about that teaching. Multiple times in his ministry. He wasn't there to take down the Roman government. Even though that is what the Jews at the time wanted from the Messiah. He wasn't doing it. And yet they're taking that and saying, look what he's trying to do. He's trying to be an insurrectionist. He's trying to take down the Roman government. He's declaring himself a king. How hypocritical. Because that's exactly what they wanted in their Messiah. And the pilot knew that Jesus was no threat to the Roman government. Barabbas, the guy that, Jew, the, the guy that the Jews wanted released. Well, he was. But Jesus was innocent. Manipulators will use any means of false accusation that they can to get their way. A wife commits adultery with multiple other men. The husband confronts her. She threatens the husband that if he doesn't agree to give her a no-fault divorce along with custody, child support, and alimony, she's going to go tell the court that he's a violent man and beats her and her kids on a regular basis. That's happened, yeah, several times, as a matter of fact. Threats a false accusation in order to get what she wants. How about the husband with the handicapped wife who, because she told him he was doing something she didn't like, says, if you bring that up again, I'm not taking you to church. I know somebody that happened to. There was a budding minister, not me, there was a budding minister who was in studies that had a wife who repeatedly kept telling him, if you don't do whatever she wanted that week, I'm going to go to tell the church that you insert the latest transgression she thought of here. That's manipulation. They'll use anything they can to get what they want. Manipulators will outright lie. John 19, 14 through 15. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. That was an outright lie. Now Pilate was probably tired of this by now. He didn't believe Jesus was guilty of insurrection or anything else. And he was probably poking a stick at him at this point in time. He is done, and he was doing a little provocation back. His provocation caused them to tell the lie that we have no king but Caesar. They didn't want to be under the Roman yoke. They thought it was oppressive. They wanted their own land. They didn't want Rome to be telling them what to do. And then they turn around and say, oh, well, we have no king but Caesar. Meanwhile, again, they expected the Messiah to come and set up the earthly throne of David there. And so the king was, the, the Messiah was supposed to be the king, and yet they're saying we have no king but Caesar. Liars. Now, lying can be another form of gaslighting. For example, I know of a husband whose wife suffered anxiety, and he actually replaced her anxiety medication with sugar pills. He kept telling her she was the crazy one. And when she found out, he said he didn't do it. Nobody else had access except the wife and husband. Manipulators have zero scruples and will say anything to justify their behavior. They say things like, that's not what I said, even though you're quoting them verbatim. Okay, this is what you said. And I quote, you could pull out your phone where you recorded them. No, oh, you just misunderstood me. That's not really what I was saying. Now, yes, there are times when somebody misunderstands and misquotes you. 
That happens too. And that can be an honest mistake. And sometimes you have to go, you know, well, that's not really what I said. Let me tell you what I said. And you have to explain it. That does happen. But if you're pulling out the exact quote and telling them verbatim, this is what you said, and they tell you that's not what they said, that's manipulation. They're trying to make you think that you're crazy. I once went to the store for a roommate uh, who told me, hey, can you get me some RC? Heard him very clearly. I know he said RC. Royal Crown Cola, that's what it stands for. I verified that he said RC. I came back with a 12 pack of RC. And he said, why did you buy that? I said, Pepsi. He didn't say Pepsi. I verified it. I made sure of it. But he kept saying, I know what I said. And I kept saying, I know what I heard twice. I verified it with you. Found out later that the guy liked to argue. He would find any reason he could to argue with somebody. It was a hobby. I knew he said RC, but as soon as I came back, it was, no, I said Pepsi. It might seem to be a minor thing, but it was no, it caused no small stir with that dude. There is an account in which a husband went to talk to his pastor one night in tears. His wife had jumped down his throat about something he didn't do and something that was actually very minor. She just started screaming at him, and he had grown tired of this behavior. He went to the pastor. The pastor walked him back up to the house and asked the wife, who proceeded to lie to the pastor. She said that all she was trying to do was make her dinner, and he just started fighting with me. This guy had been put through the ringer for years, and he started to cry again. And amazingly, what the pastor did, he started rebuking the devil out of the husband for crying. Because she lied. The wife had lied. Somewhere, there is someone telling everyone they know bad things about you when they were the ones who went nuts and brought up the chainsaw. They were the ones who brought up the kerosene and tied you up. They were the ones threatening to light your nose hairs on fire. It wasn't you. And yet they're telling everybody that it was your fault. I know a guy uh, with an ex who went through this. She was able to get sympathy from a lot of people he knew, but her own family didn't fall for it. She tried to get sympathy from her family. Oh, he did this and he did that and he's so horrible. And the response that she got from her family, don't try that, we know you. Another Christian school study, and folks, I'm not trying to tell you not to send your kids to Christian school, but some so-called Christian schools are worse than the world's public schools. Check them out before you put one cent toward that place. In this school, the administrator had apparently given his daughter, who was also a student at the school, keys to all the classrooms where she could go into the teacher's room to get the answers to all the tests and assignments. Now, this had been rumored for years among the teachers, but nobody could prove it. The administrator flatly denied it until one teacher, who one of his daughters didn't like, came into his room one morning to find all sorts of unchristian things written on the board. The owner's daughter was able to get into the classroom with her friends and wrote and drew all those nasty things on the board. The teacher locked that door every day before leaving. At that point in time, he could not deny, this administrator could not deny that his daughter had keys to the classrooms. This administrator essentially did what he wanted. He wanted her to do well, I guess, and the best thing that he thought to do was to let her have the keys to the castle. Go ahead and go into any room. Here are the keys. Go into the rooms. Do what you want. Find out the answers. Whatever. And he denied, 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 denied. But then at that point in time, he could no longer deny. So let's talk about how to protect yourself from manipulation real quick. First of all, pray for them which despitefully use you. You need God. 
in that situation. You need to pray. And pray for them. Pray for them, not just against them. Oh, God, you know, remove this person from whatever. Okay, that's called an imprecatory prayer. You find them a lot in the Psalms, but pray for them. So if they're most likely, if somebody treats you like that on a repeated basis, they're most likely not born again. Because the born again experience changes a person from the inside and makes them desire to obey God. Okay? So pray for that person. Okay, I've seen I have seen some of the worst people that cussed up one wall down the other, drank like a fish, beat people up, were, were abusive and nasty to husbands and wives. And they got born again. And they completely changed. Secondly, recognize manipulation for what it is. If Samson had taken the chance to look past the fact that Delilah was such a cutie, he might have seen what she was doing. Three times, he told her. Of course, every one of them was playing with her, because I'm sure he thought she was playing, so he was playing with her. But at the same time, when he was telling her, hey, you know, if you do this, then I'll lose my strength. All three times, she said, Samson, the Philistines are upon thee. And he broke off and he took care of the Philistines. He broke whatever he was tied with or whatever happened, he took care of them. But it happened three times. You would have think a light bulb would have turned on and gone, bing, maybe I better think about this. He should have seen it coming. Recognizing a pattern of manipulation helps you form a game plan on dealing with it. Flee if you can. If Samson had recognized what Delilah was doing, he could have gotten out of that situation. Run for the hills! And he would have still had his hair and his strength, and he wouldn't have lost his eyeballs. If you have a girlfriend or boyfriend who is a manipulator, get away from them quickly. Over and over again, I read and I hear from people who feel trapped that the manipulation actually gets worse after marriage. They're trapped because they're married. And what they thought would disappear once they put the rings on has gotten worse. Run for the hills. Now for some, you're married to the manipulator and you cannot run. At least try to get away from the situation for the time being. Go to the store. Go for a ride. Go out and breathe some fresh air. If you can't get away, Go silent. The Sanhedrin accused Christ of many things and he remained silent. Hey, anything you say can and will be held against you in their court of law anyway. So just remain silent. I mean, you can respond and say okay, and but don't fight. Okay, You can acknowledge that you hear them, but don't fight. You can even just say, look, I'm not doing this right now. And let the other go nuts. Put in some earbuds. Just don't respond to their threats or their kicking or their screaming or anything else. Along these lines, don't defend yourself. Reminding another person that you are not what they say you are just brings more accusations from a different angle. They want you to think you're the bad guy because they have a goal in mind. Get away. Quote some scripture to yourself. Try to get your mind in another direction. Try to get your mind on heavenly things and not on earthly things at that point. Don't manipulate back. Oh, this is a this is hard. This is difficult. It's a temptation. But don't let yourself act like the ungodly person you're dealing with. You're a Christian. If you're a Christian, you're born again. If you're born again, you want to obey God. God says to turn the other cheek. Easier said than done. I get you. Expect to be manipulated in different ways. The manipulator will change tactics. They will up the ante, so to speak. Expect it. When Jesus was tempted in the desert, and that was Satan's attempt to manipulate him, Satan tried three different ways to get Jesus to sin. And he never did. The devil tried three different ways. And it actually doesn't say how long each one took. 
See the manipulation for what it is. The other playing God is trying to control you. It's what they want. Listen, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Recognize the manipulation as the attack of Satan that it is, and stand against it. Finally, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the belt of truth. You know the truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness so that you can behave righteously in this situation. Put on the boots of the gospel of peace. The ultimate goal is for us to strive to get peace with this person. Take up the shield of faith wherewith you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Uh, and manipulation is wicked. And as we have discussed, there will be a plethora of fiery darts flying in your direction. You must rely on your faith in Christ. Put on the helmet of salvation because it protects your thinking. Take up the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Listen, when Satan tried to manipulate Jesus in the desert, his response was, It is written. It is written. It is written. The Word of God can be your anchor to hold on to your sanity when you're dealing with this situation. If you can get away from it, get away from it. But if you can't, I hope that this helps you recognize and deal with manipulation. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You are so gracious, loving. You're an amazing God, Lord. God, I pray for those that are being manipulated as well as those doing the manipulation, God. I pray for all of them, Father God, that they can wake up and see your will, Father, that you, God, that we are to obey you. You are the Lord. And that you expect us to do what you say. And Lord, I, I, I'm thankful, God, because without you, I would have never have seen the behavior of the Pharisees and made this connection to manipulation, Father God. So I'm glad you showed me. I'm thankful for it, Father God. And once again, I lift all of these people, all those listening and not listening, God. That pretty much covers everyone. Uh... I thank you, for God, for, for this, God, and I thank you, God, and I pray for those that are listening, Lord, that maybe they know somebody who's going through it, if they're not, and they can say, hey, listen to this. You know, th this, is, this is some good information for you. Lord, I thank you, God. I pray that this bears fruit, and I praise you, God, in Jesus' holy name. Amen.